This is Viterbi Voices, your chance to hear stories about research, classes, student life, and more. Directly from our students, faculty, and other members of our engineering community. All right here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Hey everybody, welcome back in to Viterbi Voices. As usual, I am your host, Paul Ledesma, Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. My name is Audrey Roberts. I'm a junior studying mechanical engineering here at USC. And my name is Luce, and I'm the director of myself, and I am a junior <laughs> studying computer Are engineering. Are you though? Are you the That's director debatable. of yourself? That's debatable, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and I'm studying computer engineering and computer science. Awesome. Luz, welcome back. Welcome back to the podcast, right? You've done this yep. before, right? Yeah. And so this is episode, how many episodes have you done? This is, uh, oh man, uh, four or three? I can't remember. Um, you've, This is your second, this semester, so. This, oh, three, probably three. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, welcome back. Very cool. And Luz, what's what's new with you? Personally, um, I guess I'm having a lot of fun with my classes. I think as you, a You guess. I guess. <laughs> I say I guess because I'm getting a little roughed up by them right now. Sure, yeah, <laughs> We're in yeah. the thick of it during yeah. midterm season. So that's why, I, that's the only doubt I have right now. I'm it like, am I having is, fun? <laughs> it definitely is midterm season. Everybody has a little bit of a fog. It is. Yeah. But I like all my classes a semester and I think as a junior, I'm really starting to feel those upper divs and like I'm starting to get a little more specialized. So upper divs, meaning upper, upper division, division coursework. coursework. Yeah. Yes. Upper divs. Upper divs. Upper divs. Like a lot of 300 level and yeah. 400 level coursework. I don't yeah. say complete sentences anymore. It's all abbreviation. Uh, yes. It's just optimizing. Mm -hmm. Constantly Optimi optimizing. <laughs> Take the, derv the derivative of that top. And <laughs> 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 well, Luz, you uh, bring us an episode today. What's this episode all about? Yeah, so I got to interview uh, one of the professors I actually have in one of my classes right now, Professor Matthew Whiting. Um, he's technically in the ITP Information Technology uh, Program Department, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of Viterbi students, basically all the students that he teaches are Viterbi. Sure. And uh, we talked about all the different opportunities for like in indie game development at USC and like uh, what it means to actually go out of your way outside of the classroom to like build a fully fleshed game. That's awesome. I think um, so many students love video games. Yep. Obviously, the idea of just gaming in general is a big deal. Um, what is something that you want to point out to students before they jump into this episode? What's something you want them to listen for? Uh, I want them to listen out for all the different names of organizations that we throw around uh, <laughs> because we, there's a bunch of different opportunities to get involved and it's, in gaming yeah in gaming specifically at usc and we, we throw around some studio names like studios that you can investigate internship opportunities when you get here and uh -huh. um different uh organizations on campus that have talk um speakers and have different talks and like build games and like ha in a hackathon style so like maybe just put it, putting your ear to the ground for those for those organizations when you're actually here at USC and stuff. All right. Yeah. Well, really cool. So let's get out of the way to talk a little bit more about computer science games at USC. How how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? You just taught a lecture. Yes, <laughs> I'm I did. in that lecture. I did. Yeah, great. You're doing great. Um I think this is your first time being interviewed for our podcast specifically, right? Yeah. So I think for any, so we, sometimes we have recurring listeners, sometimes people drop in on our specific episodes. So you want to give yourself a quick introduction as to who you are, All right. what you're doing, and yeah. what you're doing at USC. Uh, yeah, so my name is Matt Whiting. Uh, I'm a teacher here in the, uh, in the games programming stuff. I work for the ITP department, um, and that's where we do a lot of the, the game programming classes. Um, I started out as just a professional video game programmer. I've just been programming video games for, I say 20 years, but that's just because I stopped counting and I don't <laughs> want to say how old I am. Um, so yeah, I, I've been programming video games for a long time, uh, ever since the beginning of the PlayStation 1. When the PlayStation 1 came out and we really started doing 3D graphics seriously, um, I had, turns out I had been doing 3D graphics kind of on my own for, for other stuff, unrelated to games, and it translated over to games directly now that we had, you know, 3D games. Yeah. And so All then the I... fun math, right? <laughs> well, it's a fun math, yeah. You know, I mean, um, I was, a, I was an aerospace engineer by training, 
and we use a lot of you know matrix math, little linear algebra, um, and basically like I, I always visualize. I still visualize things in this way. Uh, I use linear algebra to transform from the pilot's point of view out to the aircraft point of view, out to the world's point of view, down to an observer on the ground looking up at the aircraft. Right. Every time you transform from one point of view to another, that's just a matrix. That's right. that's our linear algebra. Right. And so I was doing all that, um, and I was creating 3D visualizations of what the aircraft is supposed to look like if you look at it up in the sky as it's flying around. Um, so that was what I was doing. Um, and it turns out that's kind of how we do video games. Mm-hmm. So I got into video games um, through the PlayStation series from PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, um, and the also creatively named now PlayStation 5. Five. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Never would have guessed they'd call it that. <laughs> Xbox is the one that you can't guess. <laughs> yeah, Xbox is a little weirder. Um, yeah. So from the, the original Xbox, which was just called Xbox, and then the Xbox 360, because apparently it does kickflips or something. Yeah. Like, it's a skateboard or something. I don't know. Yeah. And then, well, I was like, what are they going to call the next one? Xbox 720? Yeah. Xbox 3? What are they going to call it? Xbox One. Wait, what? <laughs> We're going back. The, the third one is number one? What is that about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now Xbox One, the iteration, they have the One S. I don't even know Oh, yeah, the, the One S. And the, is there an X also, I think? I don't know what they X- call them. What is the new it's... Xbox? I just call it the new Xbox. That's yeah. so bad. <laughs> I should figure what that uh, what that is. Um, cool. But you said that obviously you lecture here and you yes. have classes here. So what kind of classes do you usually teach and can you... Give some perspective on that. All right. So, yeah, um, once a year I'll, I'll teach a section of video game programming. That's ITP 380, for those of you looking to sign up. Um, video game programming. That's where we, in C++, we learn the basics of how video games are structured, how to program them, and we go through a lot of just really classic video games, and each student sort of makes it. We'll start with, like, Pong, Going way back to the way back, we'll start with like a Pong, and then we'll do like Asteroids, and we get up to Mario, and then we do a Zelda, do a Pac-Man, and then we do some 3D. We move on to 3D graphics, programming stuff, and 3D controls, concepts, um, and we'll do, we end up with this like four-part series, we call it Parkour's Edge, mm-hmm. so that's like a first-person parkour type of game. And the students have to program all that stuff, um, you know, all the controls and the movements and things like that. Yeah, and then super cool. And then obviously game engines. That right, work. game engines, <laughs> right. So after you've taken that and you're like, this is awesome, I want to be a programmer, I want to be a game programmer, you could take game engine programming, which is ITP 485. Um, and in there, we get down to the nitty gritties. We Instead of just how do I make this character move, now it is how do I draw anything. How do I draw a 3D triangle? How do I draw a 3D mesh? How do I make it animate? How do I, um, how do I tell whether I've collided with something? Um, that kind of stuff. So we get really down into the nitty gritties of how all that stuff works. Yeah. And as class. a student in that class, I can say I've never been so happy to see a singular triangle before. <laughs> that yeah. was a super exciting big moment for me. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not as exciting maybe as making Mario. And you're mm-hmm. like, hey, look, I made Mario. That's yeah. awesome. How did you do that in, in, what do we give you, two oh, weeks? Yeah, like a week. A week, week and a half. A week, yeah. week and a half to make Mario. It's like, what? And in this class, we give you a week to make a triangle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Appreciate yeah. the little things, I think, is, is what my experience has been so far. <laughs> yeah. But um, I guess the main topic of discussion, I think, as someone who has been super-duper involved in like, CS games and, I guess, the game scene, quote-unquote. Yeah, the here game at, scene here at USC. USC. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to ask about what your involvement with like the kind of independent game development, usually like a lot of the student runs things. I mm-hmm. know as someone who has a lot of peers in this class, like people are doing all kinds of stuff outside of the classroom. So I guess I kind of wanted to talk more about that. Like I, I know you talk, talk about pitches all the time. Mm. I know mm-hmm. that the CS Games major has like a capstone that's like I think a year mm-hmm. long. There's also like other external events happening at USC, like Game Jam and stuff. So hoping we can talk about that. Okay, well, well let's start with that. You, you mentioned what we call AGP, um, Advanced Games Program. 
that's sort of a, a loose name for uh, several different classes that all meet together. The capstone for CS games. Uh, if you're going to be a CS games major, you, you end up taking it. It's two semesters. So it is a year long. We get together in groups, groups of students, that we actually combine the IMGD students, the interactive media students, which is basically game design. We'll take those students, pull them into the same class, and make groups of 10 to 20 students per group. So we're not talking about just like two or four. We're actually making pretty decently sized teams here. And they'll spend a year making a game. Um, they, we, start, we actually kick off, we're kicking off very shortly. Um, the end of this month, maybe next, no, uh, early next month, we'll be expecting the first round pitches. So students who are going to take that class, they write up their own game ideas and they pitch them. And then the, those that get selected will move on to the next round and they'll make a prototype. So students here enrolled in classes make prototypes of their games, little mock-ups of how the game's going to be, and then they present those in front of a panel of industry people and faculty. And then the ones that are selected from that batch, they build game teams around them. They recruit 10 to 20 other students, and that's our team for the year. And they come back in the fall and then in the spring, and they make that game. And then the big exciting thing is in May, you know, in the spring, people getting ready to graduate and stuff, we have the USC Games Expo. We have this huge expo where we take over, like, we take over the whole cinema school area, indoors, outdoors. We take the sound stages, all of it, and we set up all the games that we've made. So we definitely highlight those AGP games, those capstone games. We'll highlight those, but also everything else that's going on at the school, games-wise. We'll highlight all of that. So what else? You mentioned there's more. Yeah, there's um, game jams. There's at least one game jam each semester. Uh, we'll, I think the next one's this weekend, I think. Yeah, there's yeah. one coming right up. Yeah, yeah. And so what is a game jam? If you don't know, a game jam is when you show up and they will announce the theme for the game, and then you have some very short period of time to make a little game based around that theme. And by short period of time, usually there are 48 hours, something like that. 24 hours, 48 hours, make a game super fast, with a team of folks that you just put together right then and there. Sometimes. You know, sometimes you come with a ready-made team. It's like, hey, let's go to the game jam together. Let's make a game. Um, other times, you can just show up by yourself. Show up by yourself and go to the game jam and say, hey, I want to join a team. And find yourself a team. Get in there and meet some new people and make some kind of crazy rapid prototype game uh, around whatever theme they've got. And, yeah, usually these things are some kind of little competition. It's a friendly competition, but mm -hmm. there's, there'll be some kind of awards and you know, trophies and stuff. Yeah. So hackathon, but yes. game focus. Then. It's, Just it's get exactly it right. Exactly right. right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think as someone who is in CS games but, like, floats around the little edges, po peeks, peeks into the edges, um, I think one of the most exciting things about, like, doing games at USC and I've seen this through like talks and like who, who comes to campus and it's just uh, location is a big thing I think. Um, there's so many game studios around here, especially down in Santa Monica and Burbank. You got some, some really small studios like the independent studios and you've got your big AAA developers like EA and DICE and stuff. Um, so I guess could you speak a little bit more as to like how LA is helping like it, the, our location I guess is like influencing how games are being developed here. Yeah, LA is, is the place to be uh, for game development. Because as you mentioned, we have everything available here. Um, if you want a future, you know, a career in video game development, maybe you're thinking, I want to work at EA, right? I want to work at one of these big places making these huge projects. I want to be a part of that. Then we have, you know, the list is, is tremendous. We have EA here. We have Activision here. Blizzard is here. Mm -hmm. uh, there are various, some of their subsidiaries are here too. Um, you know, Infinity Ward yeah. and, and Treyarch, and they're here. 
Um, but there's also lots of small studios are here. Uh, like, who am I working for? I'm working right, right now, I'm working for a, a company called Giant Squid. And even though their name awesome is, name, the name is Giant, awesome. yeah. but uh, they're very small. So it's a small company making one game at a time. Um, and I'm just sort of pitching in a little bit with that. So yeah, there's lots of indie game that goes on here. There's educational games that go on here. Um, like, you know, ABC Mouse is here. Have you ever heard of them? Yes, They're yes, in Glendale. I have. They, sell, they try to sell, like, do you have kids? I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not That's yet. not the plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, I definitely am familiar. Yeah, so they're, they're here too. There's all kinds of, and there's just all kinds of other things that you might not be thinking of. Like uh, Google is here. Yeah. Google's got an office down Pia in Vista, Venice. Vista, yeah. Yeah, Pia Vista now, yeah. Um, so yeah, they're there and... They're even making games, too. Yeah. Uh, games and game support for their stuff. Mm-hmm. So tremendous. Just the opportunities around this area are huge. There's stuff elsewhere, all over the world. I mean, people, games can be made anywhere. You can hook up a computer. So uh, if you've got enough battery power, you can make games in the middle of the Amazon jungle. But uh, probably you're going to want a permanent electrical hookup. So any town, any city, anywhere in the world, you can do it. Um, with distributed development especially. Like, um, I just finished up working for Kentucky Route Zero, which is made by a small company. They're called Cardboard Computers. And there's just there's three three guys. And they don't even all live in the same town. So <laughs> They got to commute. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, they just, they just telecommute, yeah. right? They just get together on computer. And why not? That totally works. So... Um, yeah, you can do games anywhere. There are game studios all over the place, um, you know, all over the world, all over the country. But if you want to find like the hubs, there's a few hubs around with just like a lot of a lot of stuff. And LA is really a big one. Nice. Yeah, I think just the fact that people come to campus, that I get starstruck. <laughs> like I, I think I mentioned before. Like I met the head of like one of Xbox's new. Um, like studios Mm. um oh man they're called it's with an i but it's brand new studio they haven't even developed anything but it was just it's just a new first party and that's i could already see that being a really big thing um so and then they just come they just show up so that that's super cool um in agp two weeks ago we had microsoft execs come by yeah so straight from microsoft came by to meet the students see their games give their advice um and, you know, they're taking an active role. Uh, we try to bring people by, by from especially the local places. Like, uh, I tend to bring, like, I've got somebody coming, is it next week? Coming from Unity. Unity yeah. We have, Unity has an office here in Burbank. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so if you don't know, Unity is a game engine. So they are a big developer of game engines specifically. So that fits into this class. So we have, I think they're going to send four, actually. Four representatives from Unity are going to come into the class next week and give a little talk about some of the things they've discovered and what you can do. You know, not just, it's not a pitch of what we can do with Unity so much as what they have done to leverage the concepts that we're learning about in class. What do you need to know if you want to work at that level? Mm. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. I guess... To finally top it all off, I guess, for anyone deciding to come to USC or is even currently at USC and is super interested in, like, pursuing game development and stuff, all the stuff outside of the classroom, I guess, um, what kind of tips would you give? Because, like, for me, what I'm seeing is that, especially with the capstone, you're interacting with people from different trades, right? And I think, as also as an engineer, like, I've learned to take my technical abilities and translate them in, in a different format to communicate effectively with people across different trades. So I guess that would be, I guess, my internal lesson. But I guess coming from a different perspective, uh, what kind of tips do you have in that regard? I, the first thing I want to say is that's the, exactly the perspective I was hoping you'd get. And, and that is it's all about that teamwork and that collaboration. Um, I was just... I was just having dinner with a friend of mine who's there thinking about hiring some junior engineers. And I said, hey, what are you looking for? And the first thing out of his mouth was, 
I, I want somebody that can talk to me. I want somebody that we can communicate. Um, and, you know, he, the, he didn't say, I want a genius. He didn't say, I want a programmer who knows everything. His first thing he wants is someone that is able to work in a team. So, yeah, absolutely huge. And how do you do that? Well, join a team. That's the, that's the first piece of advice I would give you. If you're interested in games, then jump in there. You, yeah, sure, you can sign up for the classes. Absolutely, sign up for these classes, and you'll get great experience, learn stuff, and meet people. But you don't even have to sign up for the classes. You can start simpler. You can go to a game jam. You can, you know, come to the expo. We got an, we got an expo coming up this spring. Definitely be there. Come see it. Meet the people that are making these things and ask them, how do I get involved? And I'll tell you, there, there's room for everybody from every discipline. You know, do you do music? You want to write music for video games. Do you do art? Can you draw a picture of what the game might look like? You can do what we call concept art. Do you want to learn more? Do you want to learn how to make a character? Make the character. Do you want to learn how to program the character? We, yeah, you can learn that. You can learn it from peers here at school by working with them. You can learn it by taking the classes. You can learn it on your own. Now, that's another thing you should see at that expo. We have it. A lot of students have just made their own projects on their own and not as part of a class, just as something they want to do. You can absolutely do that now. And we'll showcase it at the expo. Super cool visibility thing. I think that's so cool to see, like the whole community kind of come together and just like, don't matter what you're doing. If you're doing something, let us see it, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Cool. We want to see it all, and we and we want to meet you and and hear about you and, and what your story is and what what made you want to make this this game. You know what inspired you. Uh, you know that's it's great. Yeah. Right. I think that, that covers a lot of bases, so I want to thank you for speaking with me, and I, I think this is going to be super valuable for anyone who is considering studying games or is even, maybe not even considering studying games, but still wants to apply that knowledge in some way. So thank awesome. you. Awesome. Yeah. All right, thanks. Catch you later. Games. games. <laughs> yeah. I don't I never know how to come back. Off I the know. episode. I know. Other than I was, like, should I jump in? Should, who should do it? But it's okay. Games. I think the, the whisper of games is the perfect games. way to, <laughs> to get back into it. <laughs> so, um, Luz, what was something that you you didn't know either about your professor or about kind of games instruction here at USC before you had this conversation? Yeah. Um, I guess two things. Out of For my professor, before I did some research, I did not know that he came – he actually has like his bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering. Yeah. Uh, that's so cool. Like, and he, he was telling me about it. Um, so in games, uh, you have to work in different spaces. So what's your perspective from the, the, the racing car that you have in your game versus mm -hmm. the perspective of the top down view versus the perspective that of another camera that you're implementing in mm -hmm. your game. And he, he told me he was doing that a lot at work and he's all like, that's all games are changing of perspective between different, models in the same mm -hmm. space so that's he, cool that's how he jumped into it and i thought that was super cool how how the lessons that you take from one engineering discipline directly correlate to another crazy yeah. how that works yeah um and then in terms of things i didn't know before doing the episode i guess um i'm not a cs games major C computer engineering computer science but i like to dabble and uh, i didn't quite get how how interdisciplinary this whole thing was i'm like yeah you need your artist and your people and yeah you need tons of different people to uh -huh. like build a game i guess right, right but then i hear that they're making teams of like 10 15 people in their capstones that last like a year and i'm like whoa wait that's 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 a lot <laughs> that's a lot more people than i even thought i i work with a max of four maybe i don't yeah, know like so right. it's the scope of it i think was a little bit surprising yeah very yeah. cool yeah i think we were kind of we've been talking about doing an episode on this idea of CS games at USC for mm -hmm. a while, mm -hmm. but we weren't quite sure where to approach it from. Because there's so many ways, and we can do like 25 more episodes. I mean, like this, exactly. is, this is by no means the episode. Yeah. yeah, so we talked about, you know, what's CS games a major? Or how is it related to the School of Cinematic Arts? But I think um, Lou settled on a really great topic for this sort of introductory episode, which is indie game development, right? Indie because games, yeah. 
Um, I think that's where you see a lot of the excitement and the passion from students. Totally. I mean, it's such a vibrant community itself at USC. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it's really cool. I think, you know, sometimes we think, oh, like people playing video games, is there a place for me in this academic setting? And mm-hmm. like there is. Mm-hmm. So that's really Absolutely. awesome. And we were talking about how we can kind of, you know, maybe hear some more stories of this because there's a lot of super cool stuff going on at USC. Yeah, yeah. This weekend they just had Game Jam, <coughs> which is basically a hackathon that's all game focused and centered. So it's just getting an idea an idea off the ground I- as soon as possible. And then you have like industry people from like Santa Monica and Burbank all coming over and helping out. So that Sweet. was really cool to see this weekend. Too. There's so many game development companies yes, here. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so many. It's um, just nuts. Today, literally today. So I'm taking a class with the professor I interviewed uh, with uh, game engines, programming game engines. And we actually had a talk from uh, Unity. Uh, Unity is a game engine, de- mm-hmm. or not even, engine development company because they, they have a lot of applications inside of games. Yeah. And they, they just came and gave us a talk and That's talked awesome. to us about different design methodologies. Uh, I hope I said that right. Um, and when it comes to programming, these things that have to run in real time and run in an efficient an optimized manner. So that was really cool. It's great. So help explain to some of our listeners, you are not studying computer science games, but nope. you're taking the game engine class and someone outside of this place would say, wait a minute, how are you doing that? That's, you're not a game student. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I uh, declared this thing called a uh, specialization through the ITP information technology program mm-hmm. d- department. Um, and basically it's, it's not exactly a minor because my classes can, like, count for both my major and my specialization, but I do get, like, a really cool certificate out of it, yeah. and um, I had some room in my schedule, so I've just been taking classes that go towards my specialization, too. This is one of the classes that are specifically going to my specialization. I just had room for it. I was able to book it, and now I'm here. Kind of hard, but I really like it. the specialization is... <laughs> um, what do you, what do you what's mean? The special, what's the name of the special? Video game programming. Thank yeah. you. That's yeah. the one part is left out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what are the other options for specializations that computer science students, computer engineering students pursue? Um, I don't know them off the top of my uh, head. Just whatever some. I think one of them is definitely cybersecurity, which I looked yeah. at. Yeah. Um, there's another one on, I think, mobile development, mobile mm-hmm. like mobile application development, yeah. stuff like that. So a lot of the classes that you were already thinking of taking, like just outside of like your major, right. could go towards the specialization for sure. And are you leaning into that industry? Is that where you think you want to go? Because I haven't heard that from you before. So I'm yeah, kind of so curious. I think the games industry is super interesting, but I don't know. I can't see myself being a gameplay programmer, but I can definitely see myself working within the realm of real-time systems. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, a lot of consumer products have to work in real-time. Yeah, Like your computer, your phone, all, all these games like have to work in real-time. And I think having that extra constraint is something that I want to work with and, and, and explore. So I think game engines is definitely something that works lower to the lower level. So I get to leverage a little bit of my hardware background as a computer engineer, computer science student, but also I get to see the applications in game and game design. And why are we making these certain choices when we design this lower Got level it. thing? So it's really cool. Got it. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And I think a number of these specializations, I could be wrong, but you wouldn't necessarily have to be studying computer science to declare one. Nope. So, yeah. like, a lot of my friends in mechanical engineering or different engineering disciplines, um, or even not even in Viterbi, can declare these specializations. And it's mm-hmm. awesome, of course, if it, like, this counts for some of your major classes as well. Yeah, yeah. But um, a lot of them are pretty manageable to fit in your schedule, um, which is great because it um, makes it easier to yeah. for more people to do it. Are either of you gamers? I definitely am. I would definitely say so. And what do you what do you play? Um, so I play kind of all sorts of stuff. I really like role role playing games like RPGs, specifically JRPGs. So Japanese role playing games. Um, I, at home, I actually have like this giant tower that's just like my gaming PC, and okay. I also code on it. It's nice when things run faster right, <laughs> on sure. my giant t- sure. desktop. But really big fan of those. And I I, I like do what games? I don't I don't know any um, of these titles. Oh man. Uh, I guess I'm something that I'm I'm just playing through right now. I'm really excited for the new Final Fantasy VII remake is coming out. There's a demo on the PlayStation Store. Wow. I've been playing that on my PS4. Uh, play a l- ridiculous amount of like Smash Bros. And uh, what else have I been playing? Um, Fire Emblem, Three Houses, also Nintendo Switch exclusive. And then also like in the indie game de- uh, department, there's a l- really cool niche. Um, kind of like field forming for like couch co-op games. I've been playing this little game called Overcooked 
And uh, let me tell you about Overcooked because it's a little <laughs> stressful. You play with your friends, and then after the game, they're no longer your friends because you're mad at them. So you're basically like a tiny chef running around a little kitchen, and all of these things are on timers. So, like, I, I remember yelling at 2 a.m., like, the rice, John, the rice, and just, like, we're running towards, yeah, no, it's Overcooked is really fun. That's my press. <laughs> what about the chicken? Where's the chicken? So it's a lot of angry yelling. <laughs> okay. Over. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> I should bring it one of these days and uh, let's see how, how quickly friendships crumble. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, you, do you play games? No, I'm not a gamer, but I, I have been in the past. Like when I was really little, yeah. I had the first generation Xbox and... We, I only had one game, Simpsons Hit and... No, I had two games. I had Dance Dance Revolution and Simpsons yeah. Hit and Run. Yeah. And I loved The Simpsons when I was... I, just, what, I don't know, I, when I was very young, strangely. Yeah. Yeah. But So we would play Simpsons Hit and Run, all of us, and we, would, we had this like couch in our basement by our Xbox, and we would all sit in it and pretend we were like in a real car. So it was cool. It was like real life and the game. And then, um, honestly, since... Definitely, like, not in college or high school have I ever really been a gamer. But um, I think there's a lot of, like, really great work going on in the industry. I know at least I've kind of gotten more interested in it at USC, not maybe as so much as a user. Mm. But um, there's a lot of really exciting technologies. And people are making really beautiful things, too. And games can be, like, this amazing storytelling. And, you know, the technology behind it's cool, too. And there's artists. And I think... In that sense, I'm interested in it because it is this like truly interdisciplinary space. Yeah. Um, but it's not something I'm involved in. I just don't have a lot of respect for it for sure. Well, when you go back to Microsoft this semester, uh, this like summer, right? Uh, you're definitely going to hear a lot about the new Xbox Series X. And as as a computer engineer who yeah. works in, with with Xbox a little bit, Series, Series X, X. That's yeah, the that's the new one. Console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so cool. They like cram so much into this tiny box. It's insane. What's different yeah, about yeah. it? Um, I think the biggest standout thing is, um, so slowly, well, probably not quick as, as quickly as I would like it to, but, uh, most modern computers run a different form of memory called SSD mm -hmm. as opposed to like our hard disk or HDD. So mm -hmm. the game consoles are starting to hit that or starting to make that transition. So the new Xbox series X and the new PlayStation five, um, I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that they both have one terabyte or about five, at least 500 gigs of like SSD, which is way faster than anything that you can load from a disk. Wow. So really cool stuff. And then I guess the CPU is also way more powerful. I, I've been seeing some comparisons. It's like, yeah, I could run like this thing at three times optimal speed. I'm like, this. wow. And it's like still like a tiny box. So it's, it's that's cool. great. Yeah, that's awesome. And what about like esports? So. We talked about, about e doing an episode. And we need to do one. Probably. It's kind. Of, there's <laughs> esports is very um, at USC. There, Lewis can explain this better than I. But so we kind of started that idea. Yeah. But there's some competing groups at USC, oh. um, and we yeah. I don't you, want to pick sides. Yeah, we didn't want to. We weren't quite sure how to side. traverse to through that. It. Yet. Yeah, I think um, there's definitely an esports community on campus. Um, personally, the only esports that I really follow is the Overwatch League, which is a competitive right. league for yeah. Overwatch. Um, game developed by Blizzard, which is down actually down in Irvine, so they're actually yeah. really close and local. And I've gone to the Burbank Arena and seen the the, the, uh -huh. the matches they have them here in, in LA and SoCal. And um, right across the street in the Shrine this weekend, Call of Duty Esports is going to be there. Um, really? And they're selling That's tickets. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're down in the Shrine this weekend. And so uh, Shrine is a auditorium. Not owned by USC, but like directly ac across, across, the literally street. across the street. Like yeah. I walk past it on the way. It's where to the school. Oscars used to be held until the Kodak Theater was built. And it's where the SAG Awards currently yeah. are. Yeah. yeah, and the SAG Awards. Yeah, yeah. Now and a ton sports. of cool stuff. A ton all of other the time. things. Yeah, yeah. 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 A ton of other things. Award Including ceremonies. this. So. Yeah. So and then just I think there's. So we have teams that compete at Call of Duty, Overwatch. Yeah, yeah, they're at, at the coll collegiate level. So the, the collegiate that, level. That, those are all events that I've, I've, have been like at the pro pro level, but there's uh -huh. a lot of collegiate level support. Uh -huh. um, I think there's this uh, organization called TESPA, um, I think, um, that really supports uh, esports at the collegiate level. So okay, it's pretty cool. Well, what's this? What's this hubbub about esports competition? What's going like? What? Like you like, guys said, you started talking about it, and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't know what we should do. It's just like it's kind of like 
spread out. So I just need to find the right people. There's to like talk mul- to. there's a lot of it going on. It's not like consolidated in like one club or something like that. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it'd be hard to capture. Yeah, we're we're still working on still that. So working on it. We, I think it's a good uh, to episode topic. We should do it. Yeah, should definitely. It. Um, I think this is an area that, um, is unique to USC. There are a lot of kids at USC super interested in it. Yeah. yeah. And when we, you know, whenever we meet as a, as a team working on podcasts, we always talk about like, you know, what stories aren't being told. Like what, you know, mm-hmm. what are people not hearing about? That's a, right. an important part of student life at USC and then you know important groups that need to be highlighted and this is like kind of falls in that category so um we're cool. we're hoping to get more out yeah soon. that'd be great so if anyone's listening from from esports let's, let's yeah. do it let's get <laughs> and, and then I'm also curious uh, on the two of yours experiences um with something like streaming and twitch mm. is that in your lens I've definitely done it before <laughs> for to like You've three. You streamed pe- or you yeah, watch people? To, to, I've streamed to like three people. <laughs> to, to Very three. humbling experience. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. They're all my friends. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna stream this game. Um, I, I I was playing this Japanese um, series called Devil May Cry, and um, when I when it got ported over to the U.S., they changed like they mislabeled the difficulty settings. So like normal was actually hard. And I started on, I did not know this and I was playing on normal. I'm like, wow, I guess I just suck at video games, but it was yeah. really just hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I played it for six hours on stream and it did it. Well, I didn't even notice. Um, six hours. Yes. I just wow. sat my butt down and played it for six hours. Is that a normal, uh, Gaming experience. If you've got to finish really a game, you got to finish a game. Yeah. Oh, that's like, finishing. Yeah, I finished it. Oh. Um, I, well, I was like halfway through, and then I. I just if it's unclear it. to you, I don't understand any yeah, of this. Yeah. I am so out of my element, which is why I'm asking <laughs> the dumbest questions. I don't. I yeah. I don't understand a lot of it either. I also so. have a friend who's um, who's on YouTube a lot, has a bit of an audience, and she streams to like 500 people at wow. a time sometimes. And that's crazy. Yeah, I did. Uh, she's done some charity streams and stuff, and. Yeah, it's just, there's definitely people watching. Sometimes when I'm bored and I want background noise, I, like, go on random Twitch thing, uh, little channels, and they just play games. What's appealing about it? Um, is it, like, their commentary? Is it just watching the game play out? Like, it's just pure background yeah, yeah. noise? I think or? it's... Um, and I don't ask that with yeah, judgment. I think I'm, I'm trying to phrase it the best way as I can. I think it's, like, enjoying... So it's something that I like, and I'm watching someone else that I like, also enjoy this thing right so Mm. i think there's something cathartic about it like ah i'm really i'm a big fan of this game i really really like it oh there's this other person that i'm a big fan of and they're playing the game that i love and i get Mm. i get to see that and how how they respond to it so i think it's a lot of i don't know just like watching two worlds collide and at that point so and then the commentary is just funny in general too (laughs) okay yeah my only experience of this is that I recently watched the new Apple show Mythic Quest. Did you watch it? Uh, is that an Apple TV exclusive yeah. thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I haven't seen it's it. It's phenomenal. And it's just all about a game company. It's from people who <gasps> oh, made yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Um, I've and, heard about this. And, awesome. it's, and I, I thought it was really, really funny. Given that it's like all in the gaming community and everything we just talked about, you would totally dig it because yeah. it's just it's just great. <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, inside jokes and stuff. I'm the, confident. The it art is. director with the huge ego and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the, the basis of it, but it, it's it was phenomenal. So it's really cool. Oh man, maybe it's I should awesome. watch it. And there's a streamer, and then oh, they're like man. trying to figure out how to market it, and then the money aspect of how to make money off the game versus the purest of making the game, yeah, the yeah. programmers, and kind of the tiers, the social tiers of art director programmers all these different customer service agents like all these different elements it's just super super game testers it's it's all built in it's really really funny amazing good to know we got a lot on our list from last week i know star wars (laughs) that's right last week was all star oh yeah clone wars they're bad we got a lot to watch clone wars okay so okay wait a minute you weren't here i don't know if you heard last week's episode last week's episode we found out that audrey and Christina have never seen Star Wars. Like any nothing? single part. Like absolutely like zero Like a things. flash as a child that's like in my memory. But that's okay. I'll it's fine. More. It's fine, but they have never seen anything. Yeah. I just, it, it's weird to me. It's weird to have that like block to not know anything about it. Because <laughs> you went into Clone Wars. That's like, that's a deep cut. I don't, I, I, like I've never seen any part of Clone Wars. <laughs> I watched the Clone Wars before I even watched any of the movies because it was like because it was on cartoon network exactly yeah, it was a cartoon. exactly yeah. and, I, and someone told me like 
I'm like, wow, I really like Anakin. He's a little hot headed, but he's got his, he's got his heart in the right place. And then someone and you know where it goes. And you have no <laughs> someone at 12 years old is like, you know, Darth Vader is Anakin, right? I'm like, no, he would never. And I kind of like I'm freaked out about it. <laughs> Spoiler alert to Star Wars. Now we recognize that. I'm like, oh my gosh. You spoiled it for movie. Audrey. Well, I don't even know anything. Hold on. 20 year old movie? Is it? It's a 40 year old movie. No way. Wait. Okay. I'm not going to check right now, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Next, it's 39 years old. Oh, God. Empire Strikes Back came out in 1981. What? Time uh, isn't real. 20 year old. There's movie. no way. Best part about it is, I think it's a twenty-year-old movie, but it's not. I'm glad you think. Anyways, before we get them, I know this Star could Wars, be another. <laughs> There's another one. Well, uh, this is. Uh, it's March. It's daylight saving time ending. We all bounce forward today. Yes. So yes. happy spring, everybody! At least we're getting close into it. Uh, and um, yeah, I think it's a good place to call it. I think so too. All right, thanks everyone. <laughs> Look forward to more episodes on these topics. Star Wars. And Star Wars. Cheers. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs>